This is always an undertaking. Chris Cody, did you get stuck with most of this again this year, the Sueys, where you have to go through everything from the year and then condense it to just the best stuff we've done over the last year? I am uh, spearheading this. Uh, I have to shout out Yeti Blanc and Rage Against Twitter. They have helped me so much in compiling, editing, putting together, organizing. I am leading it, but without Yeti Blanc... And Rage Against Twitter, I just want to give All them right, a little shout out. All right, this is not time for an acceptance no, I mean, this is, speech. <laughs> it is you, you literally just came to me. You were like, hey, how'd this go for you? This is an award show. I did come to you, and I didn't need you to make an acceptance speech. As... That was just applause. The, 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 the audience is ready. They're trying to It sounds you like off. you had fans doing work for you, though. I mean. um, Well, no, they are fans, and it did start originally with them just – and then we – yeah, we, we paid them, though. Like, they, we, their time was hmm. whatever – your, their time was taken care of. Compensated. There's the word I was looking for. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that I'm talking. <laughs> Here's the Sueys. <laughs> and now, the Suey nominees for Most Uncomfortable Moment. Greg Cody inexplicably brings up his dog's package. He's like, he needs a wheelbarrow like Mike McDaniel, this dog. Um, <laughs> got a pair? He's really? got a pair. <laughs> Man, does he get a pair? <laughs> My granddaughter sees his schlong. What are says, you talking Jesus about? Right. And there says, is. what's that? You know, no, she doesn't. No, oh, she there did. It is. There it is. My there, granddaughter okay. saw his schlong All right. in enough. the kitchen. All and right. she said, what is All that? Right. What is this, a game that's, of Clue? Right. What's what he doing in the kitchen? Uh, uh, I said, that's what enough. he pees with. She saw his... Okay. Uh, how that's else am I going to explain good. In the very kitchen good. with yes, a... it was a little extended. I don't know how, why he was so excited. All right, but... very good. Baby. <clears throat> no! Can, we what happened can I take there? this out? But it is a baby. <laughs> anyway, he ate my couch. Mike Ryan and Roy Bellamy get into it over Roy's tweets and Panthers' credentials. Power play for Toronto. Keep in mind that they're at the Heat game is on at the same time most times. So if you're at the Heat game or you're watching the Heat game and you're on Twitter, you can actually see what's going on. No, I know, but power play to Toronto does me no favors. It, it does, is. actually. It kind of does because you know that the Panthers might okay. allow a power play goal in this situation. Right. So, cool. Yeah. I'll just see the alert for power play goal. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, you can look on Twitter. Hey, and man, just keep, you just keep doing what you're doing. All right. Well, you're not credentialed, so. Yeah. Oh, wow. Whoa! That's right. I see Roy in the press box wearing a credential around his neck. He's bona fide. One credential in one hand, a beer in the other. Well, but he yeah. is at the games as a journalist. Yeah. When you say yeah. credential, do you think I give a I actually don't give a if you give a I don't give oh. Roy, what are you doing? You're being mad spicy. right now. Now? Yeah, you always. Now? Power play Mike. Adnan Verk is asked if he likes David Sampson. Do you like David? <laughs> <laughs> that feels like such a loaded question, Dan. I mean, I, I mean, can you be a little more specific? Like, on, on what level? Like, do. Let's start with this. Would you have dinner with me? Is it just you and me? <laughs> this is quite a game. Who would have dinner with David? Oh, Finn? my God. Who, 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 if it's you, and me, if it's you me and Dan, I would do it. If it's just you and me, I'm not sure. No, I know. Listen, you, you pat yourself list. on the back. You make this top 100 list that nobody cares about. Like, you, you, you like, spend hours like, oh, I've, I've readjusted it. What's number 78 today? Nobody cares. Not one person in your sphere is like, hey, David, what's 87? Is that everything ever all at once? You, like, why, why are you doing this? I want to hear number one. No. You know what? <laughs> no, no, no. I'll tell you why I'm not giving you number one. No. You know why? Because I have to f***ing go. No. Because I'm doing a show oh. with John Skipper, who's the actual boss, where we're going to talk about sports business, and he's got a window that opens in two minutes. And no, all no, David, come on. i got to hear number one. Come on. No. Absolutely. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think about it. Dan, this has really been a slice of heaven. <laughs> Mike Ryan rants and then leaves in the middle of a show. I'm enjoying doing the show less and less. And you guys are putting me in a terrible position at the start of every show. How about you guys come up with your own content? Don't just go obnoxious Homer Mike. What are you doing? You set a table for me, and it's just like I'm in a losing proposition. Uh, I, I'm here spinning all these plates. Right. The, the, I fall on the sword for television. You tell me I'm an a-hole. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm up to here. Okay. I I'm know, up to I, here. I know, but you're, I'm doing a lot. Uh, all right. I sacrificed my own career. To be back in this chair and elevate the show to new heights. And I'm being totally disrespected every time I sit in here by a bunch of people that don't get what it is I do. Why are you turning into Trump? 
you sacrificed your career I or did. you built your career? I sacrificed my career and personal development to sit back in this chair. And all I get is disrespect as soon as we crack open the mics. Go on, carry on with the show. Marlins, hottest start since 1997. Your thoughts? Uh, no, don't. I'm not interested in those thoughts. And you can back off a little bit here because you complaining. Oh, about, I'd like to back off. Well, a lot. Uh, well, you can. Why, why don't cool. you go now? Yes, go right. now. Oh, yeah. go right later. Now. Yes, oh, go. Good. Thank uh, you. Uh, yes, you're welcome. Uh, Chris, come sit in the seat. The show. Uh, Chris Cody's contributions to Refran Del Dia with Sandy Alcantara. Ponte la fila means put your batteries in because if not, yeah. something bad's gonna happen. You got to make sure that you're. Afilao is another word that we could call it. <laughs> Afilao. Pingu. <laughs> and what? Pingu. <laughs> why is everybody laughing? I don't know why I'm laughing. <laughs> Stugat shamelessly asks the coach of his daughter's Northwestern lacrosse team for a championship ring. Kelly, I do have a question. I'm nervous about this one. I went to every single game. Only a handful of parents can claim that. Even the dreadful yes. Marquette game, Kelly, okay? <laughs> I know. You were so cold, that one. <laughs> that was freezing. And there was like five of us there, and I feel like those five parents, perhaps, this is what I'm asking. I'll be direct. Do you want my ring size? Should I send it to you? Oh what do you think? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> send it over oh my god so you great. earned it you earned it john oh my god you were too funny Coach uh, before Kane, we get... does, he, does he annoy you with stuff like that all the time <laughs> that's <laughs> one of your questions <laughs> no you know honestly he goes through my husband so he annoys mm. him <laughs> Don Van Natta hasn't left the zoom yet don Van Natta, <laughs> thank you for your journalism your reporting as always man Thanks, Pablo. Great to be with you. Thanks, man. <laughs> Good to be with you, Pablo. Everyone else can suck one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Don. I think he's gone. Okay. Thank you. Oh, he's still uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot there's eight people there. All the lights go out in our new studio in the middle of our crossover interview with the Dan Patrick Show. Wait, the lights just went out on your show. They oh my God! Yeah. Haters, what happened? <laughs> Haters, bring back our hate. Okay. Well, I... I'm sorry that the power has gone down here. I can still <laughs> hear you, though, Dan. I can still hear you. You never look better. I love it. Yeah. Anybody get any matches? Yeah. How about a candle? Can you see me? Okay. Can you see me? No. Is this the uh, Levitard Blair Witch Project? I, uh, I'm sorry that I literally, after leaving ESPN, can't keep the lights on. Stu Gotts, pay the bills for the man, will you? You want me to pay the bills? Get out of here. I don't pay my own bills. I mean. man, Can I'm... you see me at all? No. It's a dark screen. Why am I holding these lights to my face? I can't. Making me sweat. He's been holding the phone to his face for 15 minutes. Uh, Dan, it, 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 for 12 minutes, you have been in the black <laughs> and in the dark. You can't see me at all? No. <laughs> the power is out in the building, Dan. This is great. I have no idea how we're connected to Dan Patrick, honestly. It's hot in here, too. All right. Well, Wedding. now I'm now I'm here. Now you don't have any signal here coming. Oh my God, I feel bad for you. Metal Arc you Media all right. hiring yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Hiring now. As media falls apart all over the United How States. How about technicians hiring technicians right now? A lighting director, something like that. You got to start with the basics. A good We're foundation, a Dan. Ryan Fitzpatrick doesn't like Stugatz's question about the water slide. Brian, so there were several reports last year. Now, granted, these reports came from callers into a Washington, D.C. sports radio station that you had hurt yourself last year before the season on a water slide. I just want to either find out if they're true or put the rumors to bed. Were you indeed? Did your career end on a water slide? <laughs> No, I, I got hurt in a game. I think everybody saw that. But I, I just, I mean, I don't know. That's, you know, we're, I'm, I'm now part of it. I'm now part of the media. But I think we all, and you probably already knew the answer to that question. So I know it's funny and light. But now, you know, you, you give a rumor some, 
some more breath, but it just it's silly and it doesn't make sense. And no, that that never happens. How does Ryan Fitzpatrick attack a water slide? Is it uh, head, feet first, head first, head first on the belly? How's this one working? <laughs> we can we can move on to something else. Okay, Whoa! it's a two oh, way to go, Stugatz. That's the line. That's the line. That's the line. The guy's been playing forever. The guy's been playing forever, and that's the line that that you cross with your water flume buffoonery. <laughs> and you had to pissed offer. off that mother. <laughs> <laughs> he just no commented us on the water flume. You also had to give your opinion that, that you shouldn't be on a water yeah, slide over this. Yeah. Like, yeah. what kind of opinion is that? Game, I see the big bowl right before the season. It's, the big bowl water slide. Dangerous this is game. where you fouled it up, Fitzpatrick. You were shirtless at a Bills game recently. You have no cares. You are Except. like, like what, what? What? Why is that the the line? I'm, I'm glad we're not on Zoom right now. I'm, I'm glad it's just on there. But it's not the line. It's just giving, you know, you guys are, this is like a gotcha, like, you know. No, 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 right. I, I swear give it's rescues. not. Like, no. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Sorry, Ryan. We were not meaning to offend you. We didn't know that we were hitting a sensitive spot. We were just fooling around. Yeah, thank you. Dan Levitard <laughs> asks Vince Woolfork about his happy marriage. I have always enjoyed the way that you talk about your wife and your relationship, so I will ask you now, how romantic is Vince Woolfork? Vince Woolfork is very romantic. I mean, you can't see that. I, I, have, I, You are very comfortable talking about how you met your wife, how much you love her, how important she is to you, and that's the reason that I asked the question. I've always admired that about you, that you, are, you have no problems whatsoever professing your love. Well, the thing is, uh, I got a new wife now. You know, me and Bianca didn't make it, so I moved on. We moved on. It was for the better for both of us. Things just got a little awkward there. Uh, so let me be the first on this show to congratulate you on the new wife, Vince. Congratulations <laughs> on, on on feeling whole, feeling complete. You know, let's talk tailgating. Yeah, don't be, don't don't feel awkward, buddy. You know, I did, no, I don't. No, it's I mean, too late for that. It's I much mean, too Dan, late for that, Vince. I forever. appreciate I mean, you soothing me in this regard, but I already feel terribly awkward. And then my teammate comes <laughs> to my defense with not a question, well, I, I, but just, uh, uh, just a healthy congratulations <laughs> and the further <laughs> pointing out of that awkwardness because he's always good for me in those spots. I'm also thinking of divorce, Vince, after many, many years, 18 years, uh, with a partner who does things like that to you. Lucy, you were wincing throughout that entire category, but never more so than at the very end. You have declared that a winner. No voting necessary. You have yeah. said, you have declared that uh, that the Vince Wilfork thing was the worst of the moments we've had. That might be the most violently uncomfortable I've ever been in my entire life. Well, one of the things that's great about it is just the cadence and accent of the sentence of Haymaker that he hit me in the face with. Well, the thing is... Uh, I got a new wife now. <laughs> it's comedically, that had to hurt. It's comedically <laughs> perfect. The pause and the thing is, how do I say this gently? Well, the thing is, uh, I got a new wife now. <laughs> that uh is him being like, how can I do this for Dan here? <laughs> He's setting up himself. Well, the thing is. Well, the thing uh... is, uh, I got a new wife now. <laughs> so gentle. <laughs> But it's such a killer fragment I of this a sentence. Now. I have a new wife now. Somehow in the process of his divorce, you're the person we felt bad for, which is weird. Well, the thing is, uh, I got a new wife now. <laughs> All right. Let's... About that love stuff that you said I'm <laughs> yeah, so great yeah, at. whatever. <laughs> then you started lashing out at me for no reason. <laughs> you know, I was clearly uncomfortable. The reason is that... <laughs> this, You're always there with the happy... <laughs> uh, congrats on the new <laughs> marriage. Yeah, you were not helpful in any way. I feel like Stu God's caught a stray there that he did not deserve. Thank you. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. That's going to happen when I'm horribly embarrassed because uh, I have a new wife now. Can we go ahead and get to best dismissal, sir? Certainly, this is a Stugatz loaded category. And now, the Suey nominees for Best Dismissal. 
Udonis Haslam dismisses Mike Ryan and the Heat Doubters. So we got people like Mike Ryan of the Levitar Show who are off the bandwagon, not trying to get back on the bandwagon. How does that make you feel? I mean, once you choose your side, you got to stay over there. That's, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, that's how it always has been with me. I mean, I'm not a guy that likes to flip-flop and, you know, choose, um, you know, the, the good side or the side that's winning or the side that was winning then and go back to the other side. Once you choose your side, just stay on your side. We all right with that. Stan Van Gundy dismisses the movie Banshees of Inisherin. They were both telling me, oh, you got to watch Banshees of Inisherin. I don't get it. It's getting it great was depressing. It's getting great it reviews. It was terrible. I mean, <laughs> no, wow. that's a terrible one. the was worst depressing. movie I have seen in a long time. And it's one of those, I stuck with it. I wanted to quit. Stan is not You know, an hour right now. into the movie, and I'm like, it must get better at the end. No, it kept getting worse. It was uh, <laughs> absolutely a horrible movie. Poppy Lebetard dismisses the TNT and ESPN broadcasters. All these high-paid analysts, I don't want to mention names, TNT, <laughs> ESPN, you know, oh, yeah, they, they, they are dead. They cannot, they, they, they're not going to make it, you know, even if they win in the... If they lose in, in Miami, I need to calm you down. I that's need to right. Calm if they you lose down. in Miami, they don't got a chance in Boston. <laughs> or they are going to have their ass, you know what, in Boston. You know <laughs> they were wrong. They were. Are they going to lose their job? No. Are they going to get a cut in pay? No. What are they going to do? Keep predicting what is the obvious. They are going to say, "Oh, the Nuggets are going to win. Oh, Denver, the altitude. And you know what? The Heat are going to win it all. <laughs> Mike Ryan dismisses Wembenyama. Wembenyama. Not good. Oh, this at, is this. At basketball. He got swept in the finals. I think he's going to get hurt. He's a turnover machine. And what do you think he shoots from three? Take a guess. He takes a lot. Eight percent. Oh, you think thirty percent? I'd, I'd kill if he shot thirty percent. Man, woo! Draft that guy number one. Jeremy Taché dismisses USF. Top five wins under the Jeff Scott era at USF. So starting with number five this season against Howard. <laughs> That is USF's one win this season. <laughs> Number four, his first and only in-state victory in 2021 over FAMU. Wow, you were really dragging USF here in a way that's not happening a lot nationally. Number three, he started his tenure in 2020 with a victory over the Citadel. <laughs> much of a resume here number two number two his one conference win in the american athletic conference in 2021 against temple and number one doesn't exist he only won four games in three years <laughs> <laughs> all right miami marlins radio play-by-play -play guy kyle seeloff dismisses billy and chris's broadcasting ability 1-0 pitch fouled back to the screen that was the one two one two. Did I say one zero? I was looking right at it too. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Ah, the second visit from Mel this inning. How many people do you think have turned their radio off? Whoa! I think that there's radios being turned on all over America, even though you can only listen to this in South Florida. Maybe. <laughs> Here's a little something for you on Joey. You know he had the hamstring issues last year, right? Of course. All right. Um, he actually learned how to run again this offseason. Hmm. The doc told him, we got to change this up or it's going to keep on happening as the fastball runs inside ball two. So now he runs backwards. What was he doing he, before? Right. Like, he, two, steps, <laughs> two steps with one leg and then the one with the other. <laughs> two, one. A breaking ball called strike two. He just found out that I can stay healthy if I just run backwards everywhere. So he backpedals every all the bases. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> the two, two. <laughs> Juju Gotti dismisses Dan. You got to know I'm a big uh, Colombo guy. Salute to that boy. Okay, okay. I don't think that's <laughs> proof. I don't think that's proof. <laughs> I, think that, I think that could no, be. A, a I think that's a lie. I don't think that's. He said salute. I don't I mean, think that is evidence. Salute to that boy. It it suggests <laughs> camouflage. It suggests that Juju has no idea what we're talking about, um, and now is just googling it. Uh, he is I'm cheating. not Googling it. My grandmama stayed in the country. I watched the Braves. I watched Colombo. I watched Matlock. I watched Andy Griffin. Yeah. Salute to uh, you, sir. Yeah. But you go to the penalty box, Dan. You Dan, don't take you your ass to the penalty box. You don't, Juju. Call me a liar. You don't, Juju. Back to you, Stu. Jim Brockmeyer dismisses <laughs> David Sampson. What, what's your name again, sir? David, Sam, David Sampson? As in Sampson and Delilah? <laughs> Never heard that one. <laughs> oh, excuse me. 
Was that, was that just a little trite for you? I didn't come up with something clever enough? I'm just trying to get your name right because I don't know who the heck you are. Why am I here if mom and dad are gone? Why am I being forced to sit at the kids' table with David Sampson and Delilah? I can actually assure you, Brockmire, that I am perfectly fine handling the show. Okay, Dave. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, point well taken, but and I mean no disrespect now, but you can't handle shit, sir, okay? Jim Brockmire dismisses David Sampson again. Oh, that David Sampson weirdo. Because <laughs> he was not he was not the fun substitute teacher who'd wheel out a TV and play a VHS tape of Armageddon in science class. He was the, the weird one who would eat an egg salad sandwich while clipping his toenails into the trash can and ranting about Ronald Reagan. And the guy kept talking about how his ass was smooth, smoother than a newborn's cheek. He wouldn't stop bragging about his bare buttocks to me. Chris Whittingham dismisses New York City. It's just like the, the, the subway, you go down, and like every, every car ride is 40 minutes in New York City. Why are there so many people? There's just so many people <laughs> everywhere all the time. Find somewhere else to go. I actually don't think, like, having been in New York City for 48 hours, I don't think enough of them came to Florida. They just, there's so <laughs> no, many. No, no, too many of them. Yeah, too many, many of them. People in Florida. New York City, no, why go somewhere else? There's, like, a great, vast <laughs> land. Like, this country is one of the biggest countries <laughs> in the world. More go to Iowa or something, Iowa. man. It's got culture. Let, let's recreate some culture somewhere else. Litty. Chris Cody dismisses T-ball. T-ball's ball. changed. I don't like it. My daughter's playing T-ball right now, and it's changed. You know, How has it changed? It's kind of like, you know, that everyone gets a trophy thing. I'm becoming one of the, I'm an old person now. And, you know, that no one gets out in T-ball anymore. If I hit a little dribbler ground ball to first base, and the first baseman picks it up and tags first, that little hitter should go back to the dugout. Not anymore. They all go to first base. Wow. They just all run around the bases. The last hitter comes up. It's like, all right, last hitter. Now you're all going to run around. Last hitter hits a home run every time, no matter how far he hits it. I just don't like it. These kids aren't learning how to play baseball. <laughs> My daughter thinks every time you hit it, you go to first base. And that's not how it works. Actually, you could be a really good hitter and only go three out of ten times. And that's what I'm trying to teach her, and it's hard to when you're always safe in T-ball. Billy Gill dismisses Valentine's Day. Part of Valentine's Day is completely inconveniencing yourself. You know what I mean? It's like, how many hoops am I willing to jump through to make the person that I love see that I'm going to be miserable on their behalf. Like, that's really what they want. That On Valentine's Day, your loved one wants to see you be as miserable as possible for them. They'll almost be inconvenienced just to watch you be inconvenienced and Max <laughs> uncomfortable, just to see that you care. Greg Cody dismisses Dan with, and you know it's... Coming from the man uh, opposite Stugatz, who last <laughs> season began, predicted a Super Bowl victory for the Dolphins, and they were only... Not close to that. Had Tua stayed healthy, that prediction would have come true. <laughs> okay. And you know it. And you know it. I don't know it. <laughs> and I don't know why you and think. And you know it. And you know it. <laughs> and you know it. Get that shirt on the Greg Cody yeah, Show. Right. Com or that kind of thing. And you know it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? There's no comeback. And you know it. You're at a loss for words, Dan. Yeah, have to. And you know it. And you know it. <laughs> and you do. You know it. Sugats knows it. And you know it. And you know it. A healthy tour, and the Dolphins are having a parade on Biscayne Boulevard. And you know it. And you know it. And you know it. finish it that way, Greg. Chris Paul dismisses Dan for being mean to Billy Gill. One of the great basketball players for this time, even though all we do is rings culture, and so he doesn't have enough titles like LeBron, and so we somehow disparage and diminish a man who has been great. Which is by the way, and I think Chris can agree with me on that. This thank whole you. rings thing and this whole why is he putting out a book now, it's absurd. Yes, thank you, Billy, for all your contributions here. I'd like to not hear from you again. 61 <laughs> is the name of the book. Damn, Billy, you ain't got to take that, man. I'm just Jeez. saying, I'm here trying to defend <laughs> you. Dan does nothing but talk ass about you, and I'm like, that's my boy Chris. Stugatz dismisses pet owners. People who bring their pets to the pet supermarket go to hell. Oh, Speaking no. of hell, what are you doing? Or Bryles, I don't want to see your pet. Dan does that. I do not want to see <laughs> no, your pet at the pet supermarket. Pet supermarket is the place you would take a pet I, if you, you know take what? a pet anywhere. You shouldn't be allowed to take your pet there. To the pet supermarket? What? Leave your pets at home. I People who take their pets out for lunch, they take their pets for coffee, they take them to the pet supermarket. I don't want it. John Amici dismisses Elon Musk. He's a dangerous, dangerous man-child. This is the kind of person who talks about being self-made, 
but coming from a, a, an apartheid South Africa and a family who benefited from that. This is the kind of person who talks about being self-made, but sets up in California and takes billions of dollars in, in public money in order to, to do what he's done. He's a cuckoo. He shows up, sits in the nest with his gaping, wide-open mouth and weird, wrinkly skin, waiting to be fed, usually by the public purse, and then pushes out those who deserve around him. Sarah Spain dismisses Billy Gill. I wondered how he was elected, because that seemed like a poor choice from the jump. Whoa! We were trying to wow. go with the opposite of you. He's being well, so he nice to you. he did it. <laughs> What's happening if here? If you wanted to imbue the position with zero integrity, Whoa. absolutely no gravitas, What? negative strength, <laughs> complete inability to enforce, what? and what did zero I do? authority. He's the only one who said you hello. Nailed it. I'm the only one that asked how you're doing today. Yeah, because yeah. you're terrified. Jeez. And that's not what we need from a commissioner. Yeah. Amin El Hassan dismisses Buffalo Bills fans. Let's be honest. I mean, like, what do you, what is that claim to fame? Wings? All right, congratulations. The table thing. Uh, okay. A couple of dildos on the field. Sporting uh, condiments on <laughs> naked people? Like, like, oh, the this, ketchup thing is weird. You Can we what? put that out? The ketchup thing is kind of weird. It's bizarre. It's not weird, Tony. When you look at through the prism of this constitutes entertainment for these people. They have no other options. I don't think the internet even gets there. <laughs> I think it's interesting <laughs> that they're like, hey, let's go to watch a game. All right, cool. You want to get there a little bit early? Yeah, sure. That's great. Let's get some drinks in. Okay. Then I'm going to jump through that table. Like the, the idea that, like, oh yeah, that's how we do here. It's ridiculous. Why are we entertaining this? Like, oh yeah, that's cool. That's the, oh, I want to do that too. I've seen media people from other places across the national landscape get so excited to go to Buffalo, watch my first Buffalo game, and jump through a table. Mike Ryan dismisses Dan for saying Stugatz always wins. It's just why Stugatz this wins, a, Jessica, it, because everything that happened in the sport. Because you're team, always there to say he's winning when he is not making a winning <laughs> argument. How so, am I how not? About you stop saying he's winning. He's not. He's, I mean, I'm now. so confused. My, Look at his eyes when he's Googling. He's lost my, right I'm not I'm looking at anything. I mean, I'm, I'm just sitting here looking at Twitter. I'm looking at you and Jess, and it's like watching Spotify someone trying because to. Because I keep having Dan tell me he's winning. I'm looking at you, it looks he's like, not winning. It's like you guys are trying to <laughs> tackle Barry. Sanders. He's like, not he's just, winning. He's Dan's not like there. The he judge. sounds just like, like <laughs> a fool. He's a buffoon. How do I sound like, like a fool? He's a buffoon. And there's Mike. just somebody behind him going, he's winning. He's Mike, winning. Mike. But this is what, what you're doing. What are we talking Zero about? Win. Zero what are we, what are we doing? Zero win. One win. One win. Two win. It's not win. Thanos. It's not Bubbles. It's just a fool. And some other person saying he's winning. Well, what are you <laughs> so upset about? This is insanity. <laughs> what are you upset Stop. about? I blame Dan. You want to know saying he's winning. He's not winning. He doesn't remember what he said. What did I say? He thinks Ole Miss is ranked. The guy's are. a damn fool. 11 at the time, Just Michael. Stop, t stop telling me he's winning. Yeah. Stugatz dismisses the Boston College lacrosse coach. Hey, BC coach, how about you do me a favor, okay? Because I coached for 10 years, and my team went undefeated uh, two years in a row. We oh, won back-to-back -back national championships. Right. Make anyone else beat you other than Izzy Skane, okay? She's the best lacrosse player in the country. You might want to double and triple team that girl. She's really good. Stugatz dismisses Andy King. Some what? people would argue that you presided over the single worst era of the Levitard show with Stugatz. And if, if that is... That was Andy if, King, year one. <laughs> oh, no. Stugatz dismisses Chris Rock. It was a year buildup to that special on Saturday night. Who the hell is talking about Chris Rock unless Will Smith does that? You know what Chris Rock did Saturday night on Netflix? He choked. I mean, he, he did. You literally he did. choked through that sentence. He, I know I did. Uh, but he choked, okay? I'm expected to choke. He's not. He's expected to nail it. He did not nail it. He appeared to be nervous. He appeared. Here's the key to comedy. Don't think so much. And when you're sitting on a joke for an entire year and you have to deliver it, chances are it's not going to go well. Mm. It did not go well for Chris Did Rock. you watch it? And he looked old. Stugatz dismisses his daughter Emma's hopes and dreams. I, I remember having a conversation with my other daughter, Emma, who's very much in the dance, but she's not so much in the dance where she wants to be a professional dancer, right? Yeah. Like, she took it seriously. She worked really hard, but I just know my daughter, and I know it's not something she wants to do because mm -hmm. it's a lot of work, right? And so I remember telling her, hey, I'm so happy you're doing this, but you're probably not going to be a professional dancer. Okay. Not because so you're not. What was that age? Because you did it there with uh, the baby. She was six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God.
Greg Cody dismisses Jonathan Zaslow. Last time we saw Marino after Greg Cody oh, traded him, he threw for five touchdowns. Nice and he was being the man on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Mm. You can't trade Marino. Nice hat. We can't all be a three-time <laughs> champion <laughs> broadcaster. It started. For sake. Started. And he's not it's joining us. The guy for the one foot. You can't, you can't trade Marino. Okay. Get over it. That's not my fault. Get over it. It was 30 years ago. Get a life. And quit wearing a backward hat. You're a middle-aged man. Good Lord. Zaslow. Udonis Haslam dismisses Assolytics. UD ESPN Analytics says you guys have a 3% chance to beat the Celtics. What say you? Who, who said that? ESPN <laughs> analytics, the mathematical ESPN analytics. Exactly. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure that as athletics, uh, as a or whatever they call it, so <laughs> probably had us not beat in Milwaukee either in the first round. Yeah. Or the Knicks. Actually. I'm sure. I'm sure the athletics probably didn't have me sitting here with three rings and lead rebound in Heat history. I don't listen to athletics. Stugatz dismisses Prince Charles. Hey, Prince Charles, working a salad. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that guy. Stugatz dismisses Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy, two games at home with the best team in football. You won home games. <laughs> Do it on the now <laughs> you're going to Philadelphia. Yeah. Wait till you get a hold of that fan base and how they're going to treat you, Purdy. Do it on the road. Do it against Hurts. Do it in the postseason, and if you do, do it in the Super Bowl. Do it on a neutral field. How about that? How about we stop talking about Brock? Oh, Purdy, he's 8-0. Oh, Purdy, he hasn't lost the game. Oh, Purdy, statistically, he's been better than Mahomes and Burrow and Allen. How about you go win a big game on the road, Purdy? Uh, do it. I'm tired of this talk. Uh, Purdy's not good. Shanahan's not good. The team's okay. They're physical. They're big. They have great players. Debo's fine. But let me tell you what San Francisco and Kyle Shanahan are never going to do. They're never going to win a Super Bowl. You want to know why? They don't have a quarterback. Not Garoppolo. Not Lance. Not per certainly not Purdy. Purdy. Get out of here. The sod father, George Toma, dismisses oh. Eddie Mangan, Troy Vincent, and Roger Goodell for blaming him for messing up the Super Bowl grass. What Eddie Mangan did, how Eddie screwed up that field for the Bengals by overwatering it. And he did the same thing here. Yes, Mr. Mangan, you lied. You blame the ryegrass for the cause of that disaster. Bull. Whoa! Whoa! I'm mad about it. Yeah, yeah I can tell. And I'm over the hill, like I tell my ground crew. Next year, I'll probably, the Lord may put me in heaven, and I'll be looking down at your beautiful field. So he'll put me in hell. And I'll be looking up at your root system. What kind of root <laughs> system? <laughs> Yo, Sodfather has oh, bars. This is a better angle. He has bars. all you want. <laughs> but apologize to the people that put you there and helped you. And kick yourself in the ass for not listening to somebody we, like we, we've graduated Travis from Fanny. Hogan. Troy Help. Vincent headphones. never came to me or anybody <laughs> on the ground crew Can we get your headphones to up? see. <laughs> like the rebels that I work with down south, they like, would say to Troy oh, Vincent, you. <laughs> you're as useless as a parrot on the boar hog. Oh, no. That's what they oh, no. Okay. Them. I mean, the rebels thing, I didn't know where that was going either. Hold no. on a second. Come back. And Roger Goodell, I have done everything for you. You treated me well, but last year he threw me over the cliff. I would do this job for nothing, and I'll fight anybody, and all the way up to you, Mr. Goodell, to give the players the safe playing field that you're not doing. And, Troy, you better start working. Next year, if you don't do anything right, there's the door, and don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah.